Hey guys, this is Slyman. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the awesome Celestron 90 SLT Maksutov Cassegrain Telescope. This is an awesome beginner telescope. It comes on a computerized mount that's extremely lightweight. Um, your handy dandy Nexstar hand controller. Um, just a bunch of features, but the main uh, selling point to me of this telescope is it's extremely lightweight and it still has really good magnification for such a small telescope. So we're going to take a look at it, look over its features and details, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and uh, give you a review about it. So here we go. The 90 SLT Maxutov Cassegrain has a focal length of 1,250 millimeters, which is actually really good for this little small diameter of 90 millimeters. So this telescope's just less than four inches and it still has a focal length of 1,250 millimeters, so it's definitely going to give you some awesome views of the moon and some awesome views of the planets. You'll see Jupiter's moons, no problem with this telescope. You could probably even see Titan and Enceladus, um, two of my favorite moons of Saturn, through this telescope. So it just depends on the night. On a clear night, I have seen them. Um, on not so clear nights, obviously, Saturn can even be a little bit blurry and you don't really see the moons. But on a clear night, the 90 millimeter can, can uh, resolve those objects, which is pretty awesome for this tiny, tiny little telescope. So 1,250 millimeters is really good. But one of the, my favorite selling points about this telescope is it is so lightweight. This thing is 20 pounds. It's basically a telescope you can take, throw it in the back of your car, go camping, go to a dark sky site, and get awesome views with it. So, if you're ever just going out for a weekend and you don't really feel like packing up your equatorial mount and all your astrophotography equipment, but you still want to do some astronomy and some viewing, throw this in the trunk and you can go see some awesome views of the planet. So it's just a fantastic telescope. 90 millimeter aperture. Um, it's tiny, but you still get great views. Only 20 pounds and uh, just, a, just a great scope. So I really like it a lot. Comes with your red dot finder, so that's convenient as most telescopes should. Uh, a 25 millimeter eyepiece and a 9 millimeter eyepiece so you get about 50 power and 139 power with those eyepieces. So for a beginner it comes with two eyepieces, a star diagonal and a really good computerized mount that's really lightweight. Um, really it's super simple to set up. It's just a fantastic beginner telescope and even for someone that has more experience, great camping telescope. Just toss it in the car and you're good to go. One disadvantage that the Nexstar 90 SLT has over the other uh, telescopes in the SLT series is it's not compatible with two inch eyepieces. The 102 millimeter and the 130 millimeter, the refractor and the Newtonian, are compatible with two inch eyepieces, which is pretty amazing for a beginner telescope like this. They're usually never compatible with two inch eyepieces. And the 102 and the 130 are but the, uh, the 90 is not. And the reason I think that is is because this is a Maksutov Cassegrain telescope with a relatively small diameter of just slightly less than four inches. So you're mostly going to be looking at planets with this telescope. You're not going to be doing a lot of deep sky viewing. And for planets, basically all you need is a 1.25 inch eyepiece. There's really no need for two inch eyepieces on this telescope or even the five inch Maksutov Cassegrain. So that's the reason I believe it does not come compatible with two inch eyepieces like the other two telescopes, but it still kind of could be considered a disadvantage, even though you wouldn't use them very much because you can't really do a ton of deep sky viewing with this telescope, it is a little bit of a disadvantage. So the telescope should come with the new Nexstar Plus hand controller that has 40,000 objects in the database, which is an awesome hand controller. However, uh, you're really not going to see all 40,000, don't let that a statistic trick you into this because you really can't see a ton of deep sky objects with a 90 millimeter um, objective so I mean yeah it's great it does come with it but you're not gonna see 40,000 objects I can promise you that it used to come with the 4,000 object uh, database hand controller and they both still work with it so it's awesome you can actually have say this one on your next RSE and this one on your SLT and say you take one camping over the other and you want to switch out hand controllers, uh, you just plug it into the hand controller slot and it will recognize either one as the SLT hand controller. So they're interchangeable, no problem at all, and they work for both. Um, just plug it in and turn it on and it recognizes and does all of it for you. So they're interchangeable and uh, 
you shouldn't have any problems with it whatsoever. The telescope is actually really quiet, but uh, does a great job slowing uh, really fast, and uh, you can just tell it's made with really good quality. So I'm gonna slew it for you real quick, just to give you an idea of how it works. And your hand control just sits in the cradle right here. It's all really, really simple. And then obviously it will track for you and it tracks really well across the sky. I can attest to that. Now I'm just gonna move it in altitude and azimuth. Uh, so you can hear both going at the same time. We'll put it on the fastest speed of nine. Here's azimuth only. Altitude only. And then both of them together again. So you can see this telescope, uh, the SLT mount just does a good job. I mean, I know it's the lightest telescope probably in the whole series, but uh, gets around really well and the SLT uh, mount has no problems with it whatsoever. This telescope is so small that it's actually a really good spotting scope too, so you don't just have to use it as a telescope. Uh, it's so portable that you could take this out on any sort of hunting trip, or if you like wildlife, you could go spot wildlife with it. Um, really any kind of spotting. It's a great spotting scope too, just because it's so light and so portable. Like I said earlier, just toss it in the back of your car and uh, just go. It's that light, only 20 pounds. You can carry it with one hand, no problem, the whole thing. And this mount just does such a great job for being so lightweight that it's one of the reasons I recommend it the SLT series as a beginner telescope because it's just fantastic. The next R90 SLT is a Maxutov Cassegrain style telescope. One of my favorite designs that there is. Uh, it's a catadioptric optical system, so it uses a negative meniscus lens at the front or the objective end of the telescope, and it has a spherical primary mirror at the rear. So the secondary mirror actually gets held up by the lens, so you don't need any spider veins or anything like that to hold up the secondary mirror as you can see it reflecting at you right now. And the system is sealed, so it doesn't really require collimation ever. And that's why I love Maxutov Cassegrains, especially for beginners. Beginners really hate collimating. It can be tricky to learn how to do. These things really don't ever require it. Um, you can throw them in your truck or your car when you go camping, it can get banged around and you won't need to collimate it, which is awesome for beginners and awesome for anyone else too. Those with more experience, collimating can be a pain sometimes. So it's just nice that they don't really require collimation. If they get banged up enough, then yes, they should be sent back to their factory and they can do it. But that in and of itself should tell you that it's pretty rare. If you have to send it back to the factory, then it shouldn't happen very much because not a lot of people want to do that. So they, they don't really require collimation practically ever, and that's a huge selling point on the Maxutov Cassegrain. The other thing is inherent in the design is a very slow focal ratio. Um, they're typically about F10 to F15, and that um, basically means you're gonna get a lot of magnification in a small package with these telescopes. You can split double stars, uh, look at stars in a globular star cluster, get awesome views of the planets. It's just a great design for beginners. All the things they want to see, it provides great views of in a small, light, compact package. Dmitry Maksutov is actually my favorite optical designer that's ever lived. Uh, I really love the idea of the negative meniscus lens. My two favorite telescopes are the Maksutov Cassegrain, obviously I buy a lot of them, and the Maxutov Newtonian. And in the Cassegrain, the negative meniscus lens corrects for a lot of aberrations that you'd see, and it does the same thing in the Maxutov Newtonian. Um, basically, those telescopes have no coma. And if you know anything about Newtonians, if you're imaging with a fast Newtonian, let's say around F3 or F4 to F5, you're gonna get some coma. 
a Newtonian with a Maxutov meniscus lens at the front really doesn't get a lot of that. So they give really rich, beautiful views of star clusters, uh, nebulae, and things like that. And then the Cassegrain gives you awesome high magnification views of the planets, globular star clusters, and you can even split a lot of double stars. So it's just those two types of telescopes, my favorite hands down. I love Maxutov and I love both of those designs. Another awesome feature that the entire Nexstar SLT family of telescopes has is all the tripods have a bubble level in them which is really awesome because you really won't find that on any beginner telescope. Not even the Nexstar SE series of telescopes has that. Usually you have to buy a really high quality uh, German equatorial mount to have the bubble level integrated into the tripod, but not the SLT. All the tripods have it, so it makes it really nice to get your telescope level for alignment. The Nexstar SLT series also has an auxiliary port, so you can attach a GPS unit if you want to do that. Like most beginner telescopes that are computerized, the 90 SLT does have a battery bay, so you can power it with batteries. All you have to do is just uh, remove the cover, and you can uh, put in eight AA batteries, and it will run for usually around four to five hours is what I've found. Um, pretty reliably, the tracking is really good until about the fifth hour, and then they start to die, but uh, that is an option as well. The only complaint that I really have is for about a hundred more dollars or so, you can go from 90 millimeters to 127 millimeters. In a Maxutov category, and that's a big difference, a lot of light gathering power. Um, so if you can get that extra inch, I would highly recommend it. Um, if you've ever viewed through an Orion 7 inch Maxutov Cassegrain, you know just how much an inch difference can make. Those things are awesome. Uh, I love Maxutov Cassegrains though, so that's really my only complaint is for the price, if you just save a little bit more, you can get something even bigger and better. So not that this is a bad telescope by any means, but just for about a hundred more dollars, you can go up uh, about a whole inch, which is huge. All right guys, well thanks so much for watching my review of the Celestron Nexstar 90 SLT telescope. Uh, this is a great telescope for beginners. It's a Max Zutov category number one. Do you need any more? Uh, number two, it's super light, only 20 pounds, has a great focal length for high magnification views of 1,250 millimeters, a good 90 millimeter diameter, um, comes with everything you need to get started as any beginner telescope should, or any telescope for that matter. Uh, finder scope, uh, two eyepieces, a diagonal, good steel tripod, it comes with a bubble level, and really it's just a great telescope. I really like Maxutov Cassegrains for beginners, because most beginners always say they just want to see planets mainly and this telescope will deliver. So if you're a beginner and you're looking for a great telescope, I would highly recommend this one. If you can, uh, upgrade just one inch to the 127 millimeter. I would recommend doing that. Um, one inch in these small little telescopes makes a big difference. But if you can't, this is still an awesome telescope. I have one. I'll continue to keep this one. It's a great telescope. I love to just throw it in the car, uh, super easy to do that, don't have to worry about losing collimation because it is a Maxutov Cassegrain. I would highly recommend this telescope to anyone. So thanks so much for watching and have a good one.